Gon returns home to Whale Island with Kirua six months after embarking on his journey and shows Mito-san his hunter license. The two boys have fun exploring the island and agree to stick together as they search for Gon's father. Then, Mito-san tells Gon everything she knows about Jing. Mito-san was always running after her cousin Jing, but when he was 12, he left the island to take the hunter exam and returned 10 years later with Gon as a baby and a box to give him when he became a hunter himself. Maybe you should have thought about giving him some parental love. Hey yo, come on man, go easy on the guy. Hey, I'm just saying. Gon and Kirua open the box using Nen, then find a ring, a cassette tape, and a memory card inside. They listen to the cassette tape where Gon hears his father's voice for the first time, with his message being, catch me if you can. Oh, finally, some information on Gon's mom, hey! The cassette tape erases itself, then they buy a console to plug the memory card into, where they find a game called Greed Island, saved on it. Unfortunately, the game is out of print, and the few copies floating around go for heaps of money. Though Kirua's brother Miruki trades information to them, and they pinpoint the upcoming auction in York New City as their best chance to acquire a copy of the game. Speaking of heaps of money, you know what's truly priceless? You liking and subscribing. Too early in the video? Oh well, just do it please. So, after a month on Whale Island, the duo set off to York New City, where they've agreed to meet with Leorio and Kurapika on September 1st. While Gon and Kirua were learning about Nen, Kurapika was doing the same, and he discovered he was a conjurer. Once he finishes mastering his Nen abilities, he finds a job as a bodyguard for a man with influence on the York New City auction, where his targets, the Phantom Troop, will be located, according to Hisaka. He arrives at the mansion of his employer, where he and the other candidates receive a task to collect rare items to prove they are worthy of employment. Ugh, that's unfortunate. Then, Kurapika gets to show off his chain abilities, as the candidates' strengths are tested before they can leave the mansion. Meanwhile, Gon and Kirua arrive in York New City two weeks before the auction, where they discover that seven copies of Greed Island will be up for sale, with the starting bid being 8.9 billion jenny. Alright, time to turn that 800 million into 9 billion, oh my god, you lost it all. Back at the mansion, the four successful candidates, Baze, Basho, Melody, and Kurapika return with their rare item. Good thing nobody got the eyes. The head bodyguard Dalzoren gives them their mission to escort the boss to a York New City hotel room, and protect her against anyone and anything. The boss, Neon Nostrad, is the daughter of Mafia boss Light Nostrad, and her ability allows her to accurately tell fortunes, making her her father's prized possession. He uses her to make money. Though Neon badly wants to participate in the auction, the fortunes she gave to other Mafia members indicate there will be an attack, so the bodyguards are tasked with attending and bidding on the items. In an abandoned section of the city, the Phantom Troop unite, and the chief gives them the details on their mission. Steal everything up for sale at the auction, and kill anyone who gets in their way. So, September 1st, the day the four friends are supposed to meet arrives, and Gon and Kirua find Leorio in York New Market. The three then try to make enough money to bid on Greed Island, though their first method is a little too slow and steady. Gon beats a member of the Phantom Troop in an arm wrestling match. Yeah, she was using her weaker arm though. As they are surveying the entrance to the auction for any threats, Kurapika tells Melody that he is a Kurta, and his goal is to return his brethren's eyes to them. And Melody wants to find some devil piece of music and destroy it or something like that. Meanwhile, Phaeton, Shizuku, and Franklin of the Phantom Troop enter the auction house and use their abilities to kill everyone present, then clean up the scene without leaving a trace. However, none of the merchandise is there, and as the troop leave empty-handed, they are followed by the Mafia's henchmen. One of the troop members, Uvogin, easily wipes out all of the henchmen, then is faced with four Shadow Beasts. Some of the toughest combats the Mafia have to offer, okay, they're all dead. The Nostrad bodyguards watch everything transpire from a distance, but when Karapika realizes that Uvogin is a spider, he decides to take things into his own hands. He captures the weakened Uvogin with his chains, then he and the other bodyguards flee with the troop hot on their trail. Kurapika's ability, Chain Jail, is one he can only use on the Phantom Troop, making it extremely powerful, but if he uses it on a non-spider, he will die. The troop members are stopped in their tracks by the remaining Shadow Beasts, but they easily kill them, taking the one who moved the merchandise alive. Then, the Nostrad bodyguards attempt to extract information out of Uvogin, but his iron will gives them nothing. Then, Kurapika meets in secret with Hisaka, who offers to tell him seven of the troop members' abilities in exchange for... I don't know what, to be honest. He just wants a chance to fight their leader, Kuroro, because the thought of it turns him on. Meanwhile, Uvogin is freed by the other troop members who duped Alzoren into revealing his location to them. And then he's killed, oh no, so sad. Kurapika heads back to the remaining bodyguards, where he takes over as interim leader, then agrees with Light Nostrade to watch over his daughter until he arrives. Elsewhere, Uvogin resolves to settle his score with the chain user, then with the help of his fellow spider Shalnark, he begins his search for his target. Gon, Kiro, and Leorio's arm-wrestling spectacle takes him to the big leagues, 
but before they can participate, the arm wrestling competition is cancelled and everyone present is given seven targets to capture for a reward of two billion jenny each. They're all phantom troop members. Uvogin is one of these targets, and he finally comes face to face with Kurapika alone. Then the two move away from the city to commence their fight. Before they commence, Kurapika asks his opponent if he remembers the Kurta clan that the phantom troop attacked five years ago in the Luxo province, but receives an indifferent response. Then, the fight begins, and though Uvogin's immense strength damages Kurapika through the use of In, watch this video if you want to know what that is, the youngster manages to wrap his chains around his target. His eyes then turn scarlet, and he becomes a specialist, able to wield full control over every category of Nen. He then heals his arm with an enhancer ability, and begins pounding the chained spider whilst asking for information. Kurapika's chain jail prevents any troop member from mustering aura, making his attacks much more effective. As he's getting nowhere, Kurapika wraps his judgment chain around Uvugin's heart, and once he fails to answer his question honestly, his heart is crushed, as Kurapika's first victim falls at his feet. Also searching for information on the troop, Gon sells his hunter's license in order to get more money to buy the information they need. Then he and Kirua use the money to buy items infused with aura in order to resell them at a higher price. Just before they get hoodwinked out of some hidden treasure, a man named Zepira steps in to save them. Then after buying him lunch, the officer uses appraiser skills to help them earn money in order to buy a copy of Greed Island. What a nice guy. Then, Leorio informs the boys that he has located two troop members. Then the three meet and survey their targets from afar. Leorio leaves to keep an eye on the auction alongside Zepir, whilst Gon and Kirua pursue the spiders Machi and Nobunaga. They follow them to some abandoned buildings, and though they don't appear to be hidden, two other troop members, Bakunoda and Finks, show up and trap the pair. The boys, realizing they are outmatched, surrender, and are then taken to their hideout. The troop are looking for the chain user, as the chief wants him dead or alive. Though as Gon and Kirua do not know Kurapika to be the chain user, they are able to pass Bakunoda's memory searching ability, and prove they have no connection to him. But they do. Obviously. After the hundredth time telling them they don't know the chain user, all the members except Nobunaga shift focus from the boys and split up to search for the Nostrad bodyguards. Nobunaga's taken a liking to Gon and wants to recruit him to the troop, so he doesn't let the boys leave. But the duo use their wits to escape, then head to search for Kurapika in order to ask him how he gained the power to stand up to the troop. At the York New City Mall, Neo and Nostrad escapes her escort to head to the auction, whilst her father and Kurapika head to the same location. However, she is intercepted by the charming leader of the Phantom Troop, Kuroro Lucifer, and tells him his fortune. He's able to steal people's abilities, so it's a pretty useful one to have. Kuroro then deals with a couple of assassins hired by the Ten Dons in a brutal way, and gives his subordinates a simple message. Go absolutely crazy. It's so beautiful. Every troop member but Hisuka then make the city into a battlefield, and they wipe out the more than 2,000 Mafia lackeys that were supposed to assemble at the auction. Then, Silva and Zeno Zolik take on Kuroro, and... You know what? Just watch this fight for yourself, it's pretty dope. The assassins were hired by the Ten Dons to kill the troop, but Kuroro hired Irumi to kill the Ten Dons. And he does so, meaning the assassin duo no longer have a reason to fight. Once the Zoldiks leave, Kuroro and several troop members fake their death with the help of Kortopi's ability. Then they infiltrate the auction, and silently steal all of the items without anybody suspecting a thing. Kurapika, believing the troop are finished, is left without purpose. Though he cheers up somewhat after reuniting with his friends for the first time in half a year, he explains his net ability to them, and that if he uses his power on any non-troop member, he will die. Then he receives a message from Isuka that the dead spider bodies were fakes, and his resolve returns as strong as ever. At the troop's base, Kuroro uses his new ability to provide a fortune to every troop member, and they discern that if they chase after the chain user, half their members will perish. Hisuka, the sneaky little bastard, he lies about his fortune. The four friends then devise a plan to capture Pakunoda, though Kortopi's duplication ability makes it hard for Kirua to find the correct hideout. The boss is able to deduce what the chain user is after, then a group of them head to the place where the copy of the Scarlet Eyes is located in order to find him. Kurapika asks Melody for her help due to her exceptional hearing abilities, and she helps Kirua track the group, though Kurapika's reckless pursuit leads to the troop's capture of Gon and Kirua. Pakunoda manages to extract the chain user's face and name out of one of the Nostrad bodyguard squatta before Nobunaga kills him. They then reunite with the trio that caught Gon and Kirua, and Pakunoda has a chance to sift through their memories to learn what they're hiding. Though Leorio proves useful for once by giving the boys a chance to escape, they fail in their attempt, but Kurapika succeeds in capturing the boss and gives Pakunoda a message that if she discusses Gon and Kirua's memories with anyone, he will kill the boss. The boys know all the secrets of Kurapika's abilities, so that would be pretty bad for him. Though the boss is calm and believes himself to be a valueless hostage, Bakunoda's feelings lead her to oblige Kurapika's demands. Though some disagree with following Kurapika's demands, every troop member except Bakunoda head back to their base, 
whilst she heads to Lingen Airport alone. Kurapika sets conditions on both the boss and Pakunoda, and negotiates the safe release of Gon and Kirua in return for Kuroro. The troop argue amongst themselves again, but in the end, Pakunoda brings Gon and Kirua to the airport alone. Hisuka slips out of the hideout to fight the boss, and after the exchange is complete, he prepares for his long-awaited showdown, only to learn that Kurapika's judgment chain prevents the boss from using his Nen. Hisuka then loses interest in fighting and leaves, now no longer a member of the Phantom Troop. When Pakunoda returns to the base, she uses her memory bomb to shoot her memories into the remaining members, though in doing so, breaks one of Kurapika's conditions, and so dies. After all the stress he underwent, Kurapika becomes bedridden with a fever, as Gon and Kirua continue their journey to purchase a copy of Greed Island, free of the troop's pursuit. You should watch this final scene though, it's pretty funny. That is the video, done and dusted. Next week's Sunday, I will have the Greed Island arc up on the channel, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, I don't really have much else to say, so uh... Catch you then. Take it easy. And peace.